As Africa's leading defense news portal, Defense Web aims to give you the latest updates on African defense, the South African National Defense Force, and the defense industry. Hi folks, welcome to the past week in defense. In this week's edition on the continent, KBR wins a $65 million contract to support US bases in Djibouti and Kenya, and the Gambian military orders water treatment from trailers from ELW Global. In SANDF news, the SAS Galashewa has been decommissioned, and Oryx evacuates sick crew members off a West Coast fishing vessel. Vessel. The construction of the new Durban Air Force Base is among defense work formation projects. More border patrol successes are recorded by SA soldiers. A bleak picture is painted for the SANDF's future in the latest Department of Defense annual report, and there has been another qualified audit finding for the Department of Defense. In industry news, Hensalt South Africa showcases its diverse portfolio with a capability demonstration. KBR wins a $65 million contract to support U.S. bases in Djibouti and Kenya. Kellogg Brown and Root KBR has been awarded a $64.8 million US military contract to support base operations at three locations in Djibouti and Kenya. This is according to the US Department of Defense, which made the announcement on the 20th of November. It said KBR Services Incorporated was awarded the contract modification for the exercise of Operation 3 for base operating support services at Camp Lemania, Djibouti, and Camp Simba, Kenya. After award of this option, the total cumulative contract value will be $263 million, the Department of Defense said. The contract covers the period from November 2020 to November 2021. Gambian military orders water treatment trailers from ELW Global. The Gambian Armed Forces has ordered reverse osmosis water purification equipment from South Africa's ELW Global, which will supply its ROWPU 2K trailer mount system. The order was received in October and was expected to ship mid-December with extensive maintenance and operator training confirmed for students on arrival. Whilst the Gambia is a new destination for EW Global. The order strengthens the footprint of EW Global products across the G5 Sahil region after manufacturing and delivering field kitchens last year, the company said. The order, which includes transport, training, and commissioning, is for UN peacekeeping in Africa. The ROWPU 2K has proved to be very popular within the ECOWAS region and is currently in service with Senegal, Guinea, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, and Chad. In SANDF news, SAS Galashewe decommissioned. The SA Navy Navy's thin patrol capability is now down to two platforms with converted strike craft SAS Galashewe decommissioned. SAS Isaac Doyoba and SAS Makanda will be the maritime services lone patrol vessels until at least the middle of 2021 when delivery of the first multi-mission inshore patrol vessel MMRPV is expected. A contract for three MMRPVs has been entered into the Damon Shipyards Cape Town Under Project Bureau. The original call for six platforms, three inshore and three offshore, was cut due to the lack of funding. Galashewe Shewe was one of nine former minister class strikecraft in service with the SA Navy. The first six vessels were delivered to the Navy between 1977 and 1980. A second batch of three was ordered and taken into service between 1983 and 1985. Galashewe was launched on the 26th of March 1982 as the SAS Hendrick Mintz. Oryx evacuates sick crew member off West Coast fishing vessel. The SA Air Force has once again assisted the National Sea Rescue Institute NSRI in evacuating injured or sick crew or fishing vessels along the South African coastline. On the 20th of November, NSRSR ASR Airborne Sea Rescue Duty Crew were activated following a request for medical assistance from a local fishing trawler that was reporting a local adult male fisherman on board was suffering from a medical complaint. The vessel, the VSL Umzabalazo, was in deep sea, 93 nautical miles northwest offshore of Cape Columbine Lighthouse on the west coast. Western Cape Government Health EMS Metro Control dispatched an EMS rescue paramedic to respond to Yaste Plot Air Force Base, joined the NSRI ASR crew and SA Air Force 22 Squadron pilots, fight engineer, and ground crew who prepared an RX helicopter to execute the helicopter rescue operation. On arrival of the scene, an NSRI ASR rescue swimmer and the EMS rescue paramedic were hoisted from the helicopter onto the fishing trawler, and the patient, in a stable condition, was hoisted onto the helicopter using a basket hoist procedure, and both rescue personnel were recovered into the helicopter. Construction of new Durban Air Force among Defense Works Formation Project. Construction of Air Force Base Durban at King Shaka International Airport is underway and will see 15 Squadron move there once completed. This is one of the Defense Works Formation's key projects as it takes over duties from the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. This is according to Defense Works Formation DWF Commander Major General Joseph Ledwaba. Air Force Base Durban is currently sited on the old Durban International Airport grounds. In 2010, commercial flying relocated to the King Shaka International. Other DWF activity in Durban includes the identification 
identification of land parcels in Durban North to build member accommodation to support the Air Force and Naval Base Durban. The latter will be the home of the new inshore patrol vessels being acquired under Project Barrow. More Border Patrol successes for SA soldiers. Soldiers on border protection duty have recorded more successes against criminals and illegal immigrants, apprehending hundreds of people and confiscating millions of rands with the illicit cigarettes and stolen vehicles. The SA National Defense Force on the 24th of November said that in three separate night operations, one near Gumdu Mine, another close to Popolin Ranch, and one near Madimbo Ops Base, soldiers intercepted and confiscated three suspected stolen vehicles, a Ford Ranger, an Audi sedan, and a Ford Territory, together with 200 undocumented persons. The Ford Territory, valued at 120,000 Rand, was found with 23 master boxes, 28 cartons, and two packets of Pacific cigarettes, valued 314,511 Rand. In a separate operation close to my Dumbo Ops base, soldiers confiscated 20 boxes and 3 cartons of Remington cigarettes. The estimated value of cigarettes is approximately 300,000 Rand. Elsewhere, on the 22nd of November, SANDF members established a vehicle control point at Golela Junction along the N2 in Pongola. During the operation, a white Toyota Hilux was pulled over and search led to the discovery of Dacha valued at 340,000 and 380 Rand. Two suspects in connection with the possession of Dacha were arrested and taken to Pongola police station and the Dacha was was also booked in as an exhibit. The SANDF said that a joint night operation found the Bait Bridge point of entry, saw the SA National Defence Force, the SA Police Service and traffic officials yielding huge successes in clearing undocumented persons, illegal activities as well as illegal border crossings. The operation included foot patrols, vehicle patrols and roadblocks. 270 undocumented persons were deported and 6,700 rand and fines were issued to drivers without licenses and four vehicles were impounded. Bleak picture painted for SANDF future in DOD annual report. The Department of Defense annual report for the 2019-2020 financial year includes for the first time feedback on implementation of the Defense Review 2015. The Defense Review components of the report states that South Africa's core military capabilities have been declining in, for many years. This is largely due to severe and crippling cuts to its baseline funding allocation and the resultant erosion of both the capital and operating budgets of the Department of Defense. Not only has this led to inadequate maintenance, repair and overall of the largely obsolete equipment inventory, but has also led to a significant reduction in the prime mission equipment renewal program of the Defence Force with devastating effects on South Africa's sovereign defence industry. According to the report, there is little room to manoeuvre and the Department of Defence and the National Defence Force have continued where possible with inventory repair. In most cases, the main equipment that it uses is more than 40 years old and is largely obsolete with almost no spares and maintenance support available from the original equipment manufacturers. It also notes that implementation of the Defence Review over time will bring significant change to the design and structure of the Department of Defence, ensuring budget efficiency, effectiveness and economy whilst enabling combat readiness, operational sustainability and future relevance. Another qualified audit finding for the DoD. Continuing decreases in the defence budget appear not to have affected spending. In Minister Nosviru Mopisa Ngakula's Department of Defence, with the Auditor General pointing out, among others, weak internal control Controls. Government's watchdog on finance met the Portfolio Committee on Defence and Military Veterans in late November with Committee Chair Cyril Klaber noting concern that both the Department of Defence and now separate Department of Military Veterans did not respond with the required urgency to risk and improving internal controls. He was also quoted in a Parliamentary Communications Services statement as saying this was why issues of irregular expenditure are not resolved. The Auditor General reports exposes weak internal controls and if it continues the Department will will struggle to prevent non-compliance and that is a serious indictment. Another area of concern is fraud and misconduct in supply chain management, with the committee noting half of cases are not investigated along with insufficiently investigated risk areas. The Auditor General presentation to the Oversight Committee noted Mapila and Kokula's department remained qualified with findings. And in industry news, Hensolt South Africa showcases diverse portfolio with capability demonstration. Hensolt South Africa is pushing ahead with its drive to become the leading defense electronics and security solutions provider in South Africa and to this end has held an extensive capability demonstration showcasing its electronic warfare, optronics and radar capabilities. The demonstration took place on 26th of November at Fort Shans Corp Pretoria where Hensolt South Africa's managing director Rainer van der Vaart was keen to showcase the wide range of capabilities in the joint portfolio of its specialized business units. Hensolt South Africa's spectrum dominance capabilities lie with GEW which has for decades built the reputation as the the leader in electronic warfare and spectrum management systems. While Optronics is one of the world's leading 
optronic suppliers, covering airborne gimbals to submarine periscope and laser rangefinders. Fundervat said the company is seeing good business in Europe and the Middle East for optronics and spectrum dominance deliveries. Hensel South Africa is increasing its involvement in the radar, data link, identification, friend or foe, customer services and business development fields, amongst many others, and this has been helped by the recent acquisition of Telemat's air traffic management and defense business units, which will form part of the company's radar business unit. Establishing the radar business unit has been a major priority for Hensel South Africa. We have launched it and we are about three months away from having it formalized, Fundervat told DefenseWeb. A presentation session and six live demonstrations on the 26th of November took delegates from various disciplines through the organization's range of technologies, including radar, optronics, electronic warfare, and spectrum management solutions. The Argos 2 gimbal was displayed along with the new Bush Baby Long Range Electro Optical Sensor platform. A Hensoldt Expeller counter drone system was one of the products on display at Fort Swanscourt. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, our daily and weekly newsletter, and our other social media platforms if you enjoyed the podcast. Leave your comments below. Thank you for listening. Stay safe and we'll see you next week.